All right, um, really annoying. I was talking for five minutes and didn't even press record. That's why uh, I really wish this camera had a tally light. Um, I get really annoyed at stuff like that. Uh, also my own stupidity, but um, anyway, it's recording now. I shouldn't have tried to shoot blindly. My mask isn't even on. Um, anyway, this is the take two, because uh, we didn't even record the first time. Uh, I am in Mongkok, and we are testing out the Sony Gyro Stabilization. Uh, there is no gimbal on this camera, and you can see it's relatively smooth. I am hand-holding it. Now, I'll put up the, um, I'll put up the uh, original footage, the unstabilized, in the top corner. Um, it will appear a little bit smaller, and therefore probably you won't notice the shakes as much as if it were a, a full screen, but it will give you a bit of a, um, a reference of what the software is doing. So, this is the uh, gyro stabilization. The way it works is the newer Sony bodies, including this camera here, the A7 Mark IV, which is the new one I bought. Um, very nice camera, very happy with it so far. Um, Actually a really good camera for general purpose use, which is why I bought it. I'm good at both photo and video. I'll try not to stack it as I walk down these stairs. But uh, yes, no gimbal. This is all handheld. Settings are 1 200th of a second for the frame rate slash shutter speed. I'm shooting on 25 frames a second at 4K. I have an F4 lens on it, so I'm shooting wide open. It's at 16mm, and um, it is the Sony FE F4 16-35mm to 35mm Zeiss lens. It's uh, one of the first lenses the system ever came out, came out with, so I've had it for ages. And this one actually hasn't broken down on me, unlike almost every other Sony lens I've had. Get uh, the Oculus out. And... Um, yeah, looking quite nice. Now I'm just going to bump up the exposure compensation, make it a little brighter. Plus a third, and we are currently on the auto ISO. No, it's not. Oh yeah, it is. It's 3200. Um, it tells me the, the ISO here. So 3200 is the auto setting. I've locked down the uh, shutter speed to 1 200th, and um, F4 is what we're going to stay on for now. So. Uh, yeah, quite, quite usable footage, I think. The last one I did uh, worked out pretty good, but um, in low light, the uh, two hundredth of a second may be a little bit more of a problem. Um, because uh, you're getting less light hitting the sensor and uh, it's a bit darker. So I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, two hundredth of a second. Um, you need the shutter speed quite fast because uh, otherwise you get motion blur when the camera when the camera gets bumped it, you'll see it, you'll see the whole frame get blurred and 200th of a second seems to be the best setting for this uh, it looks good from my tests which is why I do these tests and um, since we're talking about tests uh, this is the test channel um, Josh Town's video diary I might change the name now I should shut up because I actually have found myself on the wrong station, the wrong level. So, um, how do I get up one? Now, it's a little confusing, Mongkok. Uh, it's got quite a bit of... It's got two, 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 two levels of stations. Well, that's not the one either. Um, one of the busiest places in Mongkok, actually. Yeah, so uh, anyway, I thought this was quite awesome. I can, I can treat this almost like a very high quality, extremely high quality action camera. It's going to stabilize all the footage. Uh, I'm going to get on YouTube. YouTube softens it anyway. I've got to go back up, by the way. YouTube softens it anyway. So uh, when I play it back with the crop on, uh, on YouTube, it's going to look quite sharp. The other thing is this is taking a... I think it's an an 8K capture and then bringing it down to 4K. So um, the 4K is actually sharper than other 4Ks. 
Uh, it's actually pretty good and not bad for the base model full frame. Um, it's kind of like one of the cheapest full frame bodies, uh, except for the A7C. Uh, this is like the entry level, but very happy with it. Um, cheaper. Uh, you, I, I have a couple A7Rs of different generations, but yeah, I thought the uh, A7 would be good enough for most purposes. Alright, so. Uh, going up again, I think, uh, I think this is the right platform. Oh no. Oh yes. This is the one I want to be at. Alright, so now that I'm here, let's change the shutter speed to... Uh... Oh, here's my train by the way. I wonder if I should keep filming when I'm in the train. People might give me some weird looks, but it is quite full as well. But, uh... Oh well, if someone, anyone wants to pick a fight with me, I guess. We'll see what happens. Um, for now, I'll keep it at 200 frames a second. Because I think I want to be outside to change it. Oh, here's a bit of space. Here we are. Welcome. Um, you know what? I'm on the wrong train. I'm not very good at multitasking. I need to be on... I am on the right train. Stupid me. Um, it's confusing because uh, that was blinking. But uh, I need to be going this way. So uh, anyway, um, good thing I uh, got back on the train. So uh, yeah, here, here I am. Point the camera away so I don't annoy people. Point it right at my face. Because, uh, you know, people can be a bit shy and... A bit weird to stick a camera in someone's face, right? I mean... Part of the reason I have this channel is because it's weird for me having a camera in my face. I started this ages ago and um, really trying to get used to uh, narrating on camera and being more natural. Actually, I'm uh, getting quite okay at it. I won't say I'm great at it, but well, the more you practice, the better you get. Um, I've always felt quite awkward when there's a camera in my face and uh, I just thought, uh, the more you do, I mean, it's hard to do, but that's how you get out of your comfort zone and how you get better at things. And I really like improving all aspects of my life, not just the uh, film and video part, uh, film and photography part. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, stabilization test. Hope this is still recording. Um, maybe I'll stand up. Uh, a lot of people on their phones, I guess, uh, I guess it is, uh, 2021 still, and, uh, you know, this is the era for being on your phone. What else are you going to do on the NPR? Um, I hope you can hear me, because, uh, I am on the, uh, the Rode Wireless, see that? But I don't have any monitors on, so I don't know, uh, don't know if the levels are peaking. I can't tell if it's recording, I can't tell if it's, uh, if the signal's good. I do have levels if I look at the back, and the good thing with this camera, the A7R4, is I can pop the screen out, and uh, oh, there we go. It'll do a little flippy thing, and it's, it's a little flippy screen. Um, I'm looking at the screen now, and now I'm looking at the camera, but um, yeah, it's giving me a, a little levels. I've got a stereo channel happening, although it is mono. Anyway, it is the Rode Link, I think it's called. The road link and uh yeah seems to work pretty good hasn't cut out in the last few videos although this is a bit more of a test um, and also i have a new mask too this is a cloth one i had a kf95 but i found that so itchy i kept adjusting it and scratching my nose and like infecting myself with all these germs from fomites fomites is a surface where you touch and like you kind of scratch and then yeah this is it's falling down but it's much more comfortable it's these washable washable masks and it cost me five dollars five hong kong dollars from the market it's pretty good we're at sham show po now don't know if you can see that um there so thank you for uh taking this mtr ride with me and uh kind of keeping me, uh, watching me on my journey, uh, on the MTR, there's, uh, 
It is a seven o'clock on a Tuesday, and uh, still quite a lot of people on it, you see. Um, anyway, I'm not going to point the camera in their face. Uh, let's focus on me. I am getting a little tired with my hands, because you've got to hold this up. And, um... Oh, mask keeps slipping. And if you, uh, if you ever hold a camera up, you, uh, for hours, it does get quite tiring. Um, I'm used to it because that's kind of my job, but it also makes me tired and gives me some back and shoulder issues. It's not that nice. Um, so it might even be worth exploring. If I'm going to do this kind of shooting to put a little monopod on it or something. Something about this high so I can grab the camera. I think that'd be quite cool. Alright, by the way, this is also a test of the camera. Because um, it is a new camera, if you've been following my last two videos. Um, test of the autofocus capabilities, the low light capabilities, how well it performs at 3200 ISO, which is what it's on right now. How it performs with the gyro stabilization and the 1 200th of a second shutter speed. Um, I think it's a, done a pretty good job, don't you think? I mean, this is all handheld. No gimbal at all, it's just the camera and the little road thing on top. Um, if it weren't for the heaviness of this lens, uh, and I guess the body, this would be a pretty good uh, gimbal setup. Uh, sorry, blogging setup, a uh, V-log setup. Um, next stop for me. But uh, yeah, I do have, uh, I do own all the full frame lenses and the full frame body, so uh, it's not like I'm going to go buy that LV camera. LV, Louis Vuitton. You know, the blogging camera that Sony actually said they uh, have to discontinue because even though it so sells well, there's a chip so shortage at the moment. So um, I'm not sure if that has the gyroscopic data on the body. A uh, really good feature, although yeah, it does give you an extra step in post. Oh, I'm getting tired holding the camera like that, so uh, I'm going to flip it around. Whoa! And one thing is everyone's wearing masks, so uh, I guess people don't mind as much because half their face is obscured. And anyway, we're getting out this side. It's quite nice that it tells you which way to go because uh, sometimes these uh, trains get really full and then you got to fight your way across to the other side. Okay, so um. Oh, I got a little zoomy lens. Oh, you can probably see me in the reflection. Oh, that was until uh, we got to the station and it's all bright. Um, this is a zoom lens, so I can go from 16 to the 35, which is that, back to 16. But once it's cropped, it will become maybe a... Well, actually, you get the choice. You get to choose if you want to do a... How, how, however much crop you want to do. Alright, so Lychee Cock Station, here we are, very nice, look at the branding on this station, very orange. And the autofocus is working pretty well, I've always liked autofocus. Um, I know a lot of people hate it, but uh, that's because it hasn't really worked that well until the more newer generations. Uh, in the past few years, it's just been getting better and better. Uh, chips have been getting faster, and there's all these, uh, the sensors, they have um, what's called focus pixels, or phase detection pixels, so each little pixel that has a little focusing sensor on it can uh, keep track of the focus and kind of figure out where the focus needs to be. That's great, I love this new technology kind of stuff. So anyway, we're going up uh, Lychicock. I'm going to find myself uh, exit B1. Um, and then we'll continue on this, uh, this blog practice session. Here we go. Alright, so that is exit CD, the compact disc exit. Looking for B. B for Bravo, if you like your uh, NATO alphabet. Here we go. 
All right, well, I've been talking for about 20 minutes, although like a complete idiot and newbie, didn't even hit record. I don't know what happened there. I just assumed that I'd start talking and then kind of thought the camera would be recording. Um, really noob mistake, which is why I really think uh, Sony should have put a tally light on the front of this camera. Um, it has a couple of LEDs, which I think are used for the self timer mode. Uh, but I wish they put a little red LED in the front because uh, I'd really like to be sure that I'm filming. Now, it does have this mode where it puts a little red box around the screen when you're recording, which is a great step forward. Um, because it's such a common mistake. It's, um, you wouldn't think professional would forget to hit record, but it happens a lot. Um, and I do it, and then people I've hired do it, and uh, yeah, like, we're just people, we're kind of dumb. We're not like computers that are incredibly smart and getting smarter like the new improvements in AI. So anyway, here we go. Wow, this ISO is like 20,000 now. 1, 12, 12,800 now. 20,000 before, so getting a little dark. Um, but the good thing about these cameras, the full frame and Sony are really good at low light. Their chips are, are pretty good, although I have to say, Actually, they haven't really improved the ISO performance since the, uh, in years. Like, I mean, they've been good, but they haven't, like, improved a lot. For example, my uh, A7R Mark II has the same ISO performance as, uh, pretty much the same ISO performance as this body. And there's been, like, something like six or eight years of development time but they haven't really improved the uh, ISO performance um, to a great level you know it's not like you're getting an extra stop or anything it's pretty much the same if you compare the a7r2 and the 3 is pretty much the same chip to this one the a7 4 same um, same performance so uh, yeah, they have improved other things, but ISO performance pretty much stayed the same. Um, I should be waiting for those Foveon type stack sensors to come into, into play. Uh, no one's really done it properly yet. Fuji had been playing around with it. Um, you know the, the sensor which does the, the RGB on the same, the same part? thought that'd be nice. Anyway, um, I think I have to end this video here because I need to find where I'm going. I need to get the map out and I don't have enough hands and I'm very bad at multitasking. So I haven't even had the chance to, uh, um, how about I do it now? Yeah, I'll, I'll change the shutter speed and you can see the difference between 200, which is right now. Now we're going to, let's do 20, 25 frames. All right, that's 25 frames. So there should be, you probably notice a little bit of blurs if, if there's a bit of a bump or a shock to the camera. Now I'm going to change it to 50. And, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have a look at the footage and review and then see the difference.